We're going to be diving deeper into how this.setState works in React. To do this, we're going to be creating an image slider. So I've already started this component. Right now I just have a state where I have an array of images. So I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but you can store whatever you want in the state. So here I have an array of strings. And then if you'd like to follow along, I just have four sources. So these are sources to images um, that I have stored in strings. And then my render function, I'm just saying uh, image slider for now. And what I want to do is I just want to render this inside of my app. And I'm actually going to just clear out some of the stuff we have here. Um, so we just rendered the image slider. And I'm just going to remove the imports from the top. And it also auto imported image slider for me when I did that. Okay, so we have our image slider rendering over here now. So what I want to do is I want to display the images in the slider and then be able to rotate through them and display the different values. So I'm going to start by just saying image. And now I'm going to just display the first image. And now to do that, I can display an image tag. And I'm going to use curly braces here and say this.state.images and just display the first image. Now the image is kind of big. I can style elements by using a special prop called style. And so this I can pass an object in. And this object I'm going to say has a width of 100 and a height of 100. And uh, that's a better size. So now I can see it in one screen. And now this style object that you can pass in has a lot of the same properties you can with CSS. So try some different stuff out with that. Uh, we're not going to be talking much about that in this video though. So the next thing that I want to do is I don't want to just display one image. I want to be able to have a button here. So I'm going to have a button that says next. And when I click that button, I want to go to the next image. So we saw in the last video, we can add an on click and I'm going to say handle next. And this function is now going to handle, I'm going to say this dot handle next. This is going to be called whenever we click the button. And so now I need to be able to keep track of what image that we're on. So to do that, I'm going to add an index. So I'm going to say index and the default value is going to be zero. So now instead of this.state.images, I'm going to say this.state.index. So by default, it's going to be zero. So we see the same image here. But now my handle next, what I want to do is basically increment index and keep images the same. So we learned that we can use this.setState to uh, do that. So we can update the state by calling this. Now, I only want to change the value of index. I want to keep images exactly the same. So set state doesn't actually just set the state. We don't have to actually uh, specify all the values. So I can actually just say index and then say this.state.index plus one. And now we didn't specify what happens to images here. So it actually stays the same. So this.setState merges the objects together. And technically it's called a shallow merge. So now this is going to increase the value of index and keep images the same. And so now I can just say next and we can go through the images here. Now, the other thing I want to mention about this, the reason why it's called shallow is because it only goes one level. So if I had an object in here, so let's call it data and data was inside of here. Um, to increase the index here, I would have to say data, wrap it like this. And now I say data, or this dot state dot data dot index. And it, the same thing does not hold true here. And I would have to change these guys over here. So data dot images and this dot state dot data dot index. So if I increase the index here, we actually just straight lose the images after this. Um, and that's because it's not going to keep the value. So here we didn't specify the images in our data because this is one level deeper, it's not actually going to get merged. So that's what I mean by a shallow merge. And if you're a little uncertain about it, I would just recommend playing around with this dot set state, calling it on different values and seeing what the resulting state is. So I'm going to just return this back to what we had it um, and get rid of this data stuff. Now, the next thing I want to talk about with this dot set state is that it's 
asynchronous. So what this means is the value of the state does not immediately change after calling this function. And we can show this by saying console log this.state before and then after we call this.state. So I'm just going to clear this and click next. And uh, we messed something up. This.state cannot read property index of undefined. And that's because I need to just change it right here. I forgot data right there. All right, so let's do that again. And now you'll notice the index is zero and zero, but we actually did increase the image or go to the next image here, right? So the value is not automatically updated. It takes a few, a little bit, and then it'll be updated in the background. So you can't just put values uh, underneath this. But if you ever do want to know about it, there is a second function here that you can pass. So this is a callback that's going to be called whenever the state is updated. So now if I say console.log this.state, I can click next, and you can see now it's logged with the index increased by one. So that's just something to keep note of, that this is asynchronous, and so the value is not going to be updated right away. All right, the other thing I just want to add is a previous button here. So let's go backwards. So with this, I'm going to say previous, and I could create a new function here called handle previous, and it could subtract an index. Um, but I want to show you another way you can pass in a function here. You can actually pass a lambda function in just like this. And I think I showed this in a previous one. So you can do that, and then I can say this.setState, um, and then I can say index this.state.index minus one. And so now I can go next, or I can go back, and now I can go through my items. And by the way, what happens if I go to the end? Well, we've now hit an undefined, so now we display nothing. So we could add some boundaries if we want to, but that's just an if statement to add in there. Um, the other thing about this is, should I be using this, or should I be using this, right? So should I be just inlining the function, basically, or should I create a function up here? So in general, it's a good idea to actually create a function here. Uh, and the reason for that is this function is created once, and then we pass the reference to it um, here, and it's clicked every time. Whereas each render, this function right here is being created, so it's a little bit more costly. There's not a huge difference, and really it's not really something to even worry about. Um, the performance of React is really good, um, but that's something to keep note of. But that is some more about how this.setState works. And we now created another cool little component here that we can flip through and create um, and basically change the state and change what's being rendered on the page on each time.